Hey guys, uh, welcome to Ask Mark number 17. Um, the reason why you're gonna get this shaky phone video at the beginning is basically, for some weird reason, my phone loves tapping out halfway through and then wiping the footage of me talking and then basically start filming again. So for the first part of this, or I say for the first part, for three quarters of it basically, you're not gonna see my face, but you will hear my wonderful voice. Um, I didn't wanna reshoot it again because Mark gives awesome uh, advice and there's a nice flow to the story. So apologies about that, but I do crop up at the end so you still can see my beautiful face. Um, yeah, anyway guys, enjoy the show. Hello everyone, welcome to Ask Mark. Look, I've got a desk. <laughs> you have. <laughs> and a picture that you won't be able to see because it's blurry, but it doesn't matter. No, my desk's off camera as well, but you've uh, all seen it before. Uh, anyway, <laughs> happy Friday, and if you're listening to this on the podcast, and happy Monday, or it's yeah. Monday. Whoa! Cool, man, are you ready <laughs> for eight exciting questions? And we might have, might have a bonus question in this week's of episode. Of course I'm ready, I live for this. Excellent, are you okay though today, <laughs> or this week? Yeah. You're, you're all okay. Yeah, it's a bit drizzly outside, and my dogs weren't really up for going for a walk this morning. Um, but I stretched their little legs. So, um, but yeah, otherwise, it's, it's all right inside. Cool, nice. Yeah, it is. It's weird that it doesn't rain inside. <laughs> anyway, let's. Uh, Unless let's... something terrible has gone wrong with your roof. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Right, so let's crack on. Question one is from Jas C. He says, Hi, Mark. Uh, thanks for another uh, informative video. Uh, cool, you're welcome. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> just wondering if you can recommend some recs. I've been looking at the Scuba Pro Mark 25 uh, S6 200 Ti, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Aqualong Legend MB, uh, MBS, the Apex mm -hmm. MTXR, and someone mm -hmm. mentioned the Shear Wood uh, SR2. Any advice yep. would be appreciated as there's so many. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of regulators out there. Um, so, if those four are your uh, are your kind of top picks, they're all good regulators. Um, some of them have kind of specialist and little features uh, over and above the rest. So, I mean, the Scuba Pro Mark Twenty Five S Six Twenty Ti is, uh, I think, apart from the D Four Twenty, their their newest regulator. Um, it's got titanium barrel on the inside, which is nice and corrosion resistant. It's a good all-rounder kind of um, of regulator. So you could use that for all sorts of different diving and you can change the configuration. Uh, the Mark 25, very high performance uh, piston first stage and the, uh, the S, 620Ti, oh, always a mouthful, the names of these regulators, um, <laughs> is yeah, a good, uh, relatively small um, second stage, but it has lots of the best features from like the S600 and the, the A700. So that's a good all rounder, I'd be happy with that, and it'd be pretty easy to get that serviced almost anywhere. Um, the Aqualung Legend MBS, is the third generation of the legend. The MBS stands for the Master Breathing System. So instead of a Venturi lever to interrupt a free flow and a breathing adjustment knob, you just have the breathing adjustment knob, but as you change that, it adjusts the Venturi at the same time. So that's quite a clever little feature that I think you only really find on, um, on this second stage. So, great for cold water diving and yeah as you like dial it in it activates the venturi lever and it makes it a little bit harder to uh, to open that valve so that's quite a nice little feature uh apex mtxr um so cold water regulator supremely tough this is probably the toughest out of um sort of these uh these regulators but it's primarily aimed at cold water diving and very tough environments so the uh the worker breathing is probably going to be a little bit higher it might feel a bit stiffer um to draw gas through it compared to other second stages um but it's a tough five port swivel turret um first stage so that's a good all-rounder but more focused at heavy weight cold water diving the Shearwater SR2 uh, is another uh, good all-rounder. 
That's a uh, piston five port swivel turret first stage. I think that's almost the only sealed one. It's very similar to the Mark 25, but instead of that uh, sort of Teflon like Extis um, coating that they have, the Scuba Pro lets the water into, sort of into the first stage. Um, Sherwood um, don't. So it's, it's sealed, which means that the cold water and the cleaning is a little bit uh, sort of better. The SR2 itself is a fairly generic second stage. I don't think there's any, anything overly fancy. If I was to pick one, personally, uh, I'd probably go down the MTXR route just because. Of course, it's Apex. You know what's Because it's got Apex. Let, let me just take a sip from my mug. <laughs> I do like Apex. I'm actually wearing Apex. They um, they gave me a thermic carbon core um, rash vest to uh, to test, and I'm actually testing it out, and I'm nice and warm. Um, they're good at giving me freebies, basically. Um, yeah. Uh, just because it, it's almost literally bulletproof. It was made for the military. This is just the, uh, the recreational version. Um, then I'd probably go for the Mark 25, the Scuba Pro S620, um, then the Aqualung Legend, and then the Shearwood SR2. Um, but they all kind of have their pros and their cons and kind of where they sit. So it depends what you want to be using that regulator for. Um, that's why it's so hard to recommend specific regulators because yeah, Apex, MGXR are great for cold water, but for the traveling diver, it can be a little bit heavy. Um, but you'll be happy with any of them. The, they'll all be cold water rated, I reckon. Um, and they'll all, they'll all do the job. Cool, excellent. Mm -hmm. Hope that helps you out. So the next question is from IPK03. I hope that's not your real name, if it is. <laughs> um, you're a computer, mate. Uh, it says, hi Mark, I'm a huge fan of all your online content. Uh, I think I will... it, oh yeah, Sean loves the word content. Oh. <clears throat> it still haunts me that YouTube have changed videos to the word content. It, it freaks me out. Anyway, I wanted to ask how uh, how oh, my life. I wanted to ask you how the life. Am I no? This is this is really. I wanted Just to do it ask, word for word. I wanted to. I want no. I want to ask you. <laughs> it's my dyslexia, mate. Uh, yeah, it doesn't help. <laughs> how the life as a scuba diving instructor was for you, and would you recommend being an instructor to someone who loves diving? Thanks a lot. Uh, lots of love from Germany. Lots of love. Mm, oh, okay. Love you too. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, life as an instructor is... Um, I, I actually did a, uh, a video on it, which is probably going live this weekend. Yes, it was the um, first surface interval that people voted for. And it was the uh, myths of dive instructors. <clears throat> um, and and in that, I uh, I talk about yeah, just myths about being a dive instructor. Um, but yeah, it's it is a fun career. You do get to meet a lot of interesting people. It's probably the most politically correct way of saying it. Um, <laughs> no, you you get to meet a lot of people, and it is a wonderful industry. And uh, and everyone quite naturally kind of gets along because we all have this uh, sort of common interest doing diving professionally. If you love it, then yeah, it's great, but not everyone is a good instructor, if you know what I mean. You you have to be a certain kind of mentality. You have to be able to teach and work with different types of people to be able to explain all of the concepts. So there are quite a few instructors who are great divers. Um, they're great in the water in their own right, but to be able to convey ideas and concepts to everybody else, all of your students, not everyone has that knack. Um, but yeah, I loved uh, being a dive instructor. It's it's a very, it's, I'm trying to put, uh, Sometimes it's very, very taxing because there is a lot going on and you are responsible for a lot of things and it's, it, it flicks a switch in your brain which is hard to unflick because you are always looking for problems before they occur. So you're always kind of, even in your recreational, uh, like relaxing diving, when you're not teaching, you're always looking for things that could go wrong. So that's always gonna be in the back of your mind when you become an instructor. But um, I do I do recommend it. It's, 
it, you come away with so many interesting stories and anecdotes and you'll go to so many places and you'll just learn and see so many amazing things. Um, I wouldn't do it for the money um, because unless you're sort of proper tier one instructor where you can teach like the really exclusive uh, courses, then you tend to get into the, the realms where there are a lot of entry level instructors and trying to make yourself stand out above the rest. Uh, if you're like multilingual, that's great. Um, but if you can teach more advanced courses, then, um, then students and dive centers are gonna be more interested in you. So it's, yeah, it, it is a great career. It is interesting, but you have to, play the game as it were um i wouldn't just sort of go into it blind and just say yeah everyone should become an instructor because not everyone should be an instructor it's um yeah it's one of those things yeah i guess the thing is at the end of the day if you if, you, if you're thinking about it you mm. should at least i don't know give it give it a shot obviously uh, like like you're saying think about things really assess whether it, you're the right person to do it um mm. and then if you like it awesome if you don't just just stop you know at least you gave it a shot i mean the big mm. thing is as well is what a lot of people don't realize um coming from the hiking element um like if you want to become a you know a group leader or something in the hiking world or you, you know mm. something like that it's all well and good you enjoying the sport up until that point but when it comes to a profession it, it changes because it's not it, it's not necessarily it's not fun but you know when you used to go on a dive before you were an instructor you'd go on a dive mm. because you wanted to go on a dive because that's yeah. where you wanted to go when it comes to you know actually teaching and educating people it's a whole whole different ball game and i know so many people especially in the hiking world that mm. have absolutely hated you know doing education or going further becoming a leader because it it basically saps the fun out of what they were doing in the first place yeah and there's on on a similar um kind of tack it's it's a matter of you spend all week dealing with scuba diving and like teaching scuba diving all that kind of stuff and then on the weekend and your mates are like oh yeah do you, do you want to go for a scuba dive and you're like oh yeah <laughs> yeah exactly i've been I've uh, been exactly yeah. there man so yeah you need to be able to separate the professional side from the recreational side yeah. um so yeah i i wouldn't I wouldn't put anybody off of it, but yeah, do do spend some time like soul searching and just make sure that yeah, teaching is what you want to do uh, instead of just like the next run of a ladder, basically. Yeah. Cool. Cool, guys. Uh, if anyone else has got any thoughts about that, you can pop it in the comments. Let's have a let's have a chin whack. Uh, so the next <laughs> question is from a channel regular and our smart regular Gregory. I'm not going to say his full name. You you attempt I think you you pretty much. Pretty much smashed it last week, Mark. I'm just gonna say, great. Uh, yeah, Bry, Bry, uh, Bry Zesko Kiewicz. Yeah, Bry anyway. Kiewicz. Yeah, hi, Greg. Uh, he says, hi, Mark and Sean. <laughs> What's your opinion on MyFlex hoses or MyFlex tech hoses? Do you think they are better than standard rubber hoses? Uh, Here we go. I'm sure he's have... gonna get some MyFlex hoses out now, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they each have their Miflex hoses, sure. Miflex. Um, now, I've always called them sure. Miflex. Always. I know, because they're an Italian company, technically it's Miflex. That's not even a Miflex hose, that's just a braided hose. That's where a lot of people get confused. Uh, that's another braided hose. Uh, exciting, isn't it, guys? Yeah. I know, this is just where I go through a drawer for the hoses. Uh, anyway, Mark's okay, hose, so mate. <laughs> My hose drawers. Yeah. Um, okay, so there there are there are a couple basic styles of hose. So this is one, and it's a braided hose. I'll just call it a braided hose. Miflex are a specific brand that specialize in braided hoses. Braided hoses are great because they're much lighter and they're more flexible. Uh, in a lot of cases, they actually have higher burst pressures as well. So um, they're, they're almost tougher in uh, in some cases. The downside is, is one, they're quite abrasive. So if you're just wearing a rash vest and like me, you have a long hose primary zone day and the hose goes around your neck, that is going to rub against your neck and be quite uncomfortable, especially when your skin's quite soft. But also with longer hoses, anything over like a meter or so, they get very buoyant. 
so they do like to float. And um, if your hose routing isn't on point, they're just gonna start disappearing and, uh, and just snagging on things. Then you get rubber hoses, um, which are much tougher and much heavier. Um, the downside is, yeah, they're, they're heavier. So if you're traveling, you're adding, granted it's only a few extra grams, but when it's on every single hose, especially if you have a two meter hose, then yeah, the, the weight does start to add up for your, um, for your regulators. Um, they're nice and smooth. Um, they are pretty tough. And, uh, and they do tend to sit exactly where you put them because they're naturally negatively buoyant, so they sink. So it's kind of, you, you need the right, uh, the, the right style of hose for your setup. So with inflator hoses, something quite short, then I'd be quite happy with, uh, with braided hoses. I tend to use braided hoses um, with uh, high pressure hoses. I tend to go down rubber because high. <clears throat> so that's a uh, a rubber high pressure hose, but that is a high pressure um, Miflex hose. So it's very very skinny. Skinny is quite nice because it does um, it is a lot lighter and it's it's a bit easier to to root. But they don't. Um, uh, they don't work with a lot of like hose clips and stuff and, uh, and when you're tying things onto it it is very small so your margin for error is quite high um so and uh, i don't know why i just feel like it's a bit more flimsy compared to a uh, to a rubber hose so i tend to go down uh, rubber hoses for my gauges um and then anything particularly long especially if i'm um, traveling with it i'll um I'll try and go down the uh, the rubber hose route. Um, there is that like middle ground, which is Miflex uh, XT Tech hoses, which <clears throat> are effectively a Miflex braided hose with a polyurethane coating to it, which is effectively a rubber hose. Um, but yeah, that that makes them neutrally or negatively buoyant, and they're quite smooth on the outside, so they're a good compromise. Um, but touchwood hoses, they, they, as long as you look after them, then they're all fine. The main downsides for me are the, the buoyancy and, uh, and the abrasiveness of, of braided hoses. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just go with whatever you want. If you're diving at home, then the weight doesn't really matter, so go down the, uh, the rubber route. If you are traveling, then yeah, do consider the um, uh, braided hoses, but do consider that, yeah, if you do have a long hose, it can rub against your neck. Also as well, with the braided hoses, they come in funkier colors. They do come in lots of colors. Um, so I've got two different yellows here. You can see my blue hose on this one up here. Um, yeah. So yeah, and you, you can customize and um, yeah, color the, your, um, your set. Let me just put some of these away. Cool, wicked. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to read What's this obscenely question? long question from Jay Han. <laughs> it says, any opinion on Tusa regulators brand? So Tusa regs, mate, are they good? Are they, oh, is that what are your opinions, Mark? Yeah. Uh, Tusa, from what I know, they're basically Scuba Pro regulators just rebranded a lot of the time. Um, <clears throat> they're fine. They're never really a, a big hitter. Um, cause I don't think that's what two sir sort of specialize in. It's kind of when a brand gets to a certain size where they make their, their bread and butter, their, their mask fins and snorkels and stuff. They make all of that and they're quite comfortable with that. So they try to, uh, or they start to diversify into other, um, sort of aspects of diving and they're like, oh, well we should make some regulators. They're perfectly fine. I'm sure they go through EN 250As and all that kind of stuff, all the testing. So there will be fine regulators, but they they don't have uh, a certain niche or flair that a lot of the other brands do. Um, so yeah, I, I'd be personally happy using um, Tusa regulators, but would I go out and buy a set? Probably not. Um, yeah, you'd buy some from Apex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's if they haven't given it to you already. Not, not just, yeah, not just because of my biases, but um, but yeah, I too, sir. They, yeah, they're they're, they're regulators, um, but there's there's nothing. There's no 
uh, like extra feature yeah. over and above anything else yeah. where I'd go, oh yeah, look at that. It's just, oh yeah, it's a set of regulators. Um, yeah, it would be perfectly fine to, yeah. uh, to breathe from, but yeah, I, I wouldn't specifically ever like recommend, oh yeah, specifically go for this regulator. Yeah, um, yeah I get what you're saying. There's no, um, they're fine, but there's nothing yeah. that makes them stand out. There's nothing, no. that, there's no wow no. factor to them. They do the job. If you need something where you need to, you know, breathe and, and you have a have a budget, it's not like they're going to be terrible about that. But yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no, uh, there's no, there's no wow factor. There's no, do you know what? I want to get this to some red because X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And if you yeah. hold up their first stages against a Scuba Pro first stage, like, oh, well, that's a Mark 11, that's a Mark 2, that's yeah. a Mark 17. They're just, yeah, just rebadged. Okay. Um, yeah, it's very interesting to know that know that I didn't know that. It, so it happens. It it happens a lot more than people think <laughs> in the diving industry okay. uh, across all things. So I think like Scuba Pro will make Tusa regulators, but then Tusa will make some masks for Scuba Pro or something. Yeah. They, they kind of share some um, sort of ideas and technology. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. Cool. Hopefully that answers you. If if there's any reason why you should buy a Tusa, if you have a Tusa regulator at home and it, yeah. it's impressed you, let us know in the comments. If there's uh, one that stands out, please let us know. Inform other people. <clears throat> so then, yeah, mm -hmm. we can do a sing and dance about Tusa regs. Uh, next question is from Jerry. He says, hi, Mark. I have a question regarding changing my T3 regulator hose to a 210 centimeter primary donate. Will this work? And what would you recommend in so far as hose type and no T degree bend uh, products? Uh, so the short answer is no. Um, cool, so thanks. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Atomic T3 regulator has a ball joint um, on the second stage, uh, which is like proprietary. So that's the only fitting that it will accept. And if you have to replace that hose, you have to replace it with like exactly the same. Um, it's been a while since I swapped one over, but it's not a standard um, 9 17th inch um, thread. So no, you can't just fit any old hose to it. You'll probably have to find some kind of adapter if you can. I mean, someone like Omni Swivel might do something. Um, they tend to be quite good with obscure um, second stages like sort of old Poseidon uh, cyclones and whatnot. They, uh, they create adapters so that you can fit almost any hose onto it. But the T3, T3 has that ball joint which goes straight into the hose. So, yeah, they might do a um, uh, what do you call it? A 2.1 meter hose. Um, so ask them, see if there yeah. is one available. It'll probably be special order. It's not something that um, most dive centers will just hold in stock. But no, I, I, I don't think you would be able to um, just take that off and just fit any hose um as far as 90 degree adapters yeah um i use a 90 degree on my uh, on my long hose i used to use a 120 degree um which isn't quite as severe um uh, it worked perfectly fine but yeah there's there's not a great deal of technology that goes into 90 degree adapters it's it's hmm. just two screw threads and a and an elbow whoa um, whoa whoa don't don't, don't ruin the magic <laughs> what are you doing? Um, but yeah, um, I'd I'd have a chat with uh, with Atomic, see um, see what they can do because they they make the hoses themselves. So you might find that you can special order a um, a, a given length hose, but I don't think it's something that you can just grab off the shelf. I don't think that's a, a standard thing. And then mm -hmm. even changing it. Um, they, they had to send me like a, a full on like booklet on how to swap the hose because you have to disconnect a thing and then it's a like two part ball joint. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a, not a rigmarole, but yeah, it, it takes some time. It's not as easy as just unscrewing it. Um, You're telling me you can't just hit it with a hammer? No, no. Oh. <laughs> All right. Precision tool number one. Oh. No, not that one. Uh, well, mm. sorry, sorry there, Jerry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like Mark says, they like you say it's probably best to talk to Atomic. They'll be able to help you out. Cool. Question number six. Hector TP ninety two. He says, "Hi, Mark. I'm looking forward to jumping from BCD to wing posh back back plate. I had word struggle saying that word last week uh, for daily <laughs> use. 
I work as a diving instructor and have some concerns about how to approach open water courses using a wing. Uh, I think yep. that may, uh, I think that maybe possible solution would be a rec harness such as the Apex WTX harness or similar. Looks more like a BCD but with some wing plus back plate benefits. For sure, not for DIR lovers. Uh, yep. If you see it as a possible solution, do you have <clears throat> any opinions beside the Apex WTX harness? Yeah, so if I was building like school BCDs for uh, for students, especially open water students, yeah, um, I'd probably go down backplate and harness route, but as you say, I'd go down more of a recreational harness. So something with quick release buckles or at least quick adjust buckles because students, trust me, they come in all different shapes and sizes. So having a single piece DIR harness would would be good for them and it it would be nice to like show them how to adjust the harness exact but that's that's going to be super boring for them they um that's not what they're like, interested <laughs> in um so yeah i'd get a, a a padded um sort of harness quick adjust and then that way you can have like a few small ones, um, quite a few middle size, medium style ones, and then uh, like a couple large ones. And and then yeah, you sort of size people up. That way it's a lot tougher for you. Sure, it's more of an investment uh, paying for school equipment, but it's gonna be double tough compared to like traditional school BCDs. And it would be good to get students into that kind of mindset of, okay, so there are recreational style BCDs like this, but we're gonna be learning in this, which is a, a more advanced um, sort of style. And then that like almost sets them up to like, oh, okay, so this is uh, sort of better and it would be better for them. Yeah, DIR, yeah, for those of you who don't know, DIR is uh, what, doing it right. Oh, I um, see, I thought it was doing it right. I think so, I, I think it changes depending on who you ask. But um, but yeah, it is basically, you just have a single piece of two inch webbing harness and that is exactly the right size for you. All of the D-rings sit exactly where you want them to and it's very like customized to you and very simple, but it's also very Spartan. So if you're diving somewhere nice and warm and they're just wearing like rash vests or old t-shirts or something, then they're not really gonna enjoy themselves because the harness is gonna be digging in uh, especially if you're like standing around whilst wearing it uh, sort of quite a lot doing skills then they're just gonna think oh is this scuba diving this isn't great but actually when you're in the water now it would be far better for like entry-level students just give them yeah adjustable harnesses the skills are gonna be so much easier as far as brands so yeah there's the apex WTX harness um, OMS will do an adjustable harness. Uh, I think Halcyon do one. Is it like the Adventure or something? Yeah, uh, Scuba I Pro. Think it is. Yeah. <laughs> Scuba Pro. Um, I don't know if they honestly still do it, um, but they used to do the Pro Tech harness, which was adjustable. They also do the Form Tech, which is a little bit too much like a recreational harness for my liking. It doesn't um, thread through the back plate. It just like book screws onto it. Um, uh, I said Halcyon, it Hollis. Is. Hollis has the HTS two or something. So there are plenty of brands out there. Look, um, X-Deep, they must have, surely. They do. Um, you either get it with a standard back plate, they just call it a deluxe harness. Oh, okay. um, so yeah, you either get it with the, the standard traditional back plate or you can get it with the um, uh, the more, I think they call it like the ultralight, which is like the mm. Zen. Um, so yeah, there, there are plenty of uh, sort of other options out there, but yeah, I'd I'd go for a, a rec harness, as it were, um, for just quick adjust with students because it, it's going to make your life and their life so much easier, and it would be a an easier transition later on for continuing education to get them into backplate harnesses and wings. Cool, excellent. Well, I hope that helps you out. So question number seven is from um, right. I'm probably not. It's got. <laughs> I'm just, I'm having struggling. I don't I'm going to say Morete. Yeah, I was going to say Morete, then Heleson, Sony. Heles, Helesoi. Helesoi. 
I apologise for that. It's, it's an O with a line through. We we don't have those in British English. Yeah, um, we don't. Anyway, don't really sorry if I butchered your name. Sorry if you're going to dislike <laughs> this video and hate me. It's fine. I'll take it. It's fine. Anyway, so, <clears throat> hi, Mark and Sean. Two-part question. Do you have a preference between the fourth element tech shorts and the apex tech shorts, given that fourth element is a bit pricier? Also, if you were to use these shorts over a five mil long, and a 30, a 30, 30, but that's quite a thick. Oof. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> a three mil long, uh, would you need two different sizes or could you get one uh, to work for both? Many thanks. 30 okay. mil long. Yeah, or a 30 mil thick, can yeah, you imagine? Thick, sorry, you yeah, like a Michelin man. Um, well, first of all, let me put my Apex mug down. Um, <laughs> oh. Because I actually have both um, with me. So I've got fourth element tech shorts, uh, but we can look at the Apex first because Apex recently changed them, uh, which is why they still have all their labels and stuff on. So the main differences are in that Apex has a bit more of a sort of a belt system uh, around the waist and the uh, and the the stitching uh, has now changed. It's now got liquid glued, um, so they're a bit tougher and they've made a change to uh, to the pockets as well. The pockets on the Apex, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, I know, oh, oh, controversial. Oh. They're just, they, so they changed them from the previous version. The previous version had uh, sort of Velcro sticky sections so that the, the pockets could like bellow out, but if you weren't gonna use it, you could like Velcro it down. Okay. Um, I think they realized that mm, very few people actually use that feature, so they just got rid of it. Um, but they also changed the, uh, the the material. So the material is a bit, you can hear it, it's that kind of crackly um, yeah. sort of material. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is a production model or just a, um, a, a pre-production sample, um, but the pockets, not a huge fan of them. They're, they'll do perfectly fine. Um, they're a pocket, they have all the features that you want. Um, but when you do hold them up against the, uh, the fourth element ones, first of all, uh, these are also big. Um, so the pockets, much bigger on the fourth element one, and they're they're just to a, a slightly higher standard, um, in my opinion. So the material isn't that sort of crinkly stuff. It's it's much softer, uh, especially to the hand. The um, the zippered kind of pockets are uh, sort of just much bigger, and these have uh, attachment loops on the inside. Um, the main pocket itself. Ow. A bit more space, sorry for that ASMR. Um, <laughs> pockets themselves, just that much bigger, so you can fit larger things inside of them, and the uh, and the bungee loops are much, much larger. So, yeah, I, I mean, personally, I use the, the fourth element ones uh, more than the, um, more than the Apex, and yeah, I mean, <sighs> On, on the inside, the fourth element, so these have this um, like grippy material uh, on the inside. So the neoprene is, um, it's not open cell, but it's, uh, it's, it hasn't got a uh, material lining. So it actually grips onto you. Makes it a little bit harder getting into them because they kind of stick to your hips. But the, um, but the apex, that doesn't, it is just a, uh, a traditional lining. So the only thing kind of holding them up really is that belt. Um, and you do have uh, sort of Velcro around the side so you can uh, sort of adjust it. So yeah, they're, they're both, <laughs> I know, um, they're both good, but um, yeah, I, the fourth element ones are worth the um, the extra money. They, there's just all of the finish to them, and um, and the pockets themselves, in my opinion, are just better. Um, they're um, yeah, I, I prefer the uh, the construction of them, but yeah, they they are more expensive. Okay, um, there we go. Dun, dun, dun. I can't believe yeah. it. What's going on, Mark? <laughs> You're officially, you're gonna lose your Wait. Apex sponsorship now because of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Apex are gonna disown me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I, good. I need my... <laughs> Bless you. And um, what about the thicknesses and stuff, wearing them over different thicknesses? Oh yeah, it was two part. Um, I mean, the, the, the difference between a, a five mil and a three mil wetsuit is what, a four mil, two mil on each side. So you're not gonna need a... Um, uh, another size, um, you, you do have a certain amount of stretch in the material itself, and you can adjust the uh, the belt. So um, 
I, I wouldn't worry too much. I'd, I'd go for something that works with the five mil, and then for the three mil, just kind of tighten my belt up. Yeah, makes um, sense. Or whichever you use the most. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll wear these over um, just board shorts, and then you kind of stretch them over your um, your wetsuit as well. Cool. Awesome. Wicked. Right, so this is the last question. Question number eight is from mm -hmm. channel regular Chris O. He it's says, like Steve O, but. Steve, Chris O. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to. He doesn't. I'm gonna, oh, no, my camera off. turned off. What's going on? Oh, no. Carry on, Mark. Carry on. This is this is embarrassing. That's all right. More, more editing work for do, do, you. Do, 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 <clears throat> do, do. Sorry, guys. This is exciting, <laughs> riveting stuff. I'm now officially just a lady pointing out a board. <laughs> Anyway, so the question from Chris. Yes, Chris, I'm done um, now. It's back. I'm back. Hopefully, okay, I'm back. You're back. Last time I did this, it wiped the other video, but we're just going to crack on. Uh, so, so Chris o says, which makes it better? Uh, what makes a better all purpose setup? Back plates and wing or side mounts? Thanks. Uh, that was a very vague question. A you're better welcome. All purpose setup. I mean, strictly, if you take all purpose literally, back plate and wing, but I could go either way with this question because a side mount uh, rig, you can dive with single cylinders, uh, two cylinders, three cylinders, four cylinders. Um, as long as you are good with mounting different um, cylinders, then yeah, you can have like any amount of cylinders within reason, obviously. Um, but they will only ever be side mounted. You can't back mount it. Side mount has all of its pros and cons. Um, I, I've been through that in multiple videos, um, but back plate and wing is very customizable. So my back plate and wing, if I wanted to, I can swap that out for a single wing and dive a, uh, a single cylinder setup. If I change the wing for a slightly larger single wing, I can dive with singles and side mounted stages. If I put the twin wing on, then I can dive twins. If I put an even larger wing on, I can dive twins and side mounted stages and other gear. Um, if I want a, a redundant bladder, I can fit a, a redundant um, sort of wing on that. So back plate and harness are very customizable. So the harness and the back plates, you can kind of almost keep the same and then just change whatever the wing is for um, for whatever you need to do. I often use cars as an analogy. So with um, with back plate and harnesses, it's very much your, I don't know, like, like kit car or like a four by four in that if you change the wing, the wing's like kind of changing out the tires, basically. So you can put the big chunky tires on for the really off-roady kind of stuff, but if you want something a bit more economic or a bit more road, then you swap those tires out and then you fit something a little bit smaller on. You can kind of customize that, but you'll always have a, um, a, a tank on your back, but you can't really side mount it. Side mount, on the other hand, is your specialist, which is, I don't know, like a Formula One car or something. Ooh. It does one thing really, really well, but that is kind of it. So yeah, it, it does side mount, but you'll never be able to mount something on your back. So if side mount, if you're happy only ever side mount diving, which more and more people are doing nowadays, then yeah, perfectly fine. Um, but as long as you know that you never want to dive with like a single cylinder on your back or twin cylinders on your back. Um, because yeah, side mount BCDs just can't do it. They don't have the attachment points. It's uh, it, it's hard to say all purpose um, because there's no one magic unicorn that will do side mount and uh, sort of twins and, uh, and cylinders. I mean, it, yeah, you can have a, a a back plate and harness setup like I've got with uh, with twins and side mount cylinders as well as the twins but I I wouldn't fit just side mount um, to it that's that's not quite how it works cool, cool. awesome yeah. <laughs> okay that sounds it's, like a pretty not complicated but there's a lot to there's a lot there to think about it's yeah it's the thing where you can go down either route um mm. it's very easy to just say oh well yeah you can go down this route of backplate and wings 
because that is very customizable and you can have it set up kind of almost however you want. But you can also go down the, um, the side mount route and then you can dive singles, you can dive twins, one on each side, or you can dive multiple stages. It's, yeah, at, hmm. at that kind of level, it's, it's very much up to you. Cool. Um, All right. Well, hopefully that's put you some food for thought for you, Chris. Oh, uh, and, uh, and sadly that is, oh wait, no. What is that noise? Do you hear it? Oh, it's a bonus question. Yeah. Right. Woo, bonus question time. So bonus question is from Cheesy Pops, uh, regular to the show. Uh, they say, Mark, in all your diving career, what was your favorite dive? Um, I mean, I have a few favorites. No, just one, um, just one. Just, just one. I mean, the one that always comes back to me is in the Farn Islands. And I was diving with a group of friends and it was like September, October time, which is where I like to go to the Farn Islands because the, uh, the, the next, you know, the next generation of seal pups are kind of, they've grown up enough that they, they're going out and they're exploring. Um, because if you go too early, then they don't kind of venture out too far. They're quite timid. Uh, if you go too late, then they're a bit too grown up and they don't want to play with divers. They're, they're a little bit more standoffish. Um, but we, um, we jumped in and it's kind of a, a kelp forest. I think the maximum depth was like seven meters or something. And we just had this, um, this one seal who just kept coming back for attention. And um, yeah, we just spent a good like 40 minutes or something uh, in this kind of clearing. And the seal just sort of kept coming up to us and we were given like head scratches and like tummy scratches and stuff. And it just kept coming and uh, and then it would kind of swim away and you're like, oh, okay, that's it. But then it would come back and you're like, oh, hey. Um, yeah, that was great. And um, everyone had a, a wonderful time because you don't get that kind of interaction with marine life with a lot of, um, or with a lot of other marine life. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people just call them like underwater puppy dogs because yeah they do act like labradors they keep coming back they just want to play um and they they're kind of used to scuba divers because it's quite popular diving around the uh, the farn islands mm. and um yeah if you get the right spot and uh, and the right seal and as long as you don't scare it off then um yeah they just sort of keep coming back they're very inquisitive um yeah, that was probably my favourite dive. Cool. Uh, what it's you've nice left out, out though, Mark, to that story is that you were feeding the seal, uh, the seal pup Snickers. <laughs> That's why I kept coming back. They can't. My um, uh, one of the guys, I think it, it, it wouldn't have been on this dive. I think it was like a year or so later. He um, he brought like a tin of sardines or something, and he was like, "Ha ha! I'm going to be the most popular." But of course, didn't really realise that seals close their noses um, when they're under the water, so they just weren't interested because they can't smell <laughs> sardines or whatever it was under the water. So um, yeah, yeah, but he, they he just can had... look at Snicker bars and go, "Hmm." Oh yeah. <laughs> no, so yeah, his his dry suit just stank of fish uh, for a while, <laughs> while afterwards. It's yeah, you're like no, they're they're not used to like tinned food. Yeah. Oh, they love a bit of uh, oh, what is it, John? Oh, what's the the tinned fish? I don't even eat fish. Um, John, well, no, John West. John Something West? like I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> With, with the guy fighting the bear. Oh yeah, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. that's a good answer. <laughs> that wouldn't be allowed anymore because it's a cruelty to men or a person in a bear outfit. In a bear suit. In a bear suit, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounds cool though. It's... Little little seal pups. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not little. They, they're, they're literally Tiny, like, mate. the size they're, they're like, of a um, person. Sea monkeys. Tiny. Yeah, I mean, their, their, their teeth are like bigger than that. There's a um, there's a video that one of my friends was um, uh, taking. I'll, I'll see if you can um, get it from his YouTube channel. And uh, and yeah, it, it kept like wanting to play with my hands. And you're like, okay. Um, uh. <laughs> and it was only it was only mouthing. Yeah, it was only mouthing. But you look at them and they're all like carnassials. Yeah. So you're like, oh, if you wanted, you could just have my finger. My, I would think I was like wearing Kevlar gloves, but 
that that wouldn't even help. Yeah. <laughs> that would just affect the taste. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh but no, this one, lovely. It, it was just kind of like mouthing. And you're like, <laughs> okay, I kind of, I trust you. Um, I think I've, I've done it to another seal sort of since. And you're like, okay, you're biting a bit too hard. Um, I'm going to take this away from you. <laughs> cool. Bless you. Well, mm. awesome. There we go. That is it. Our smart mm -hmm. number 17 is done and dusty day. If you guys <laughs> have any questions, don't forget to add the hashtag AskMark in your questions so we can find it, whether that's going to be on Instagram or on YouTube. Um, if you, uh, you could try and do it in a podcast in SoundCloud, but we don't <laughs> check it that much. So I don't think can you, you can... comment on podcasts. Huh? Can you comment on them on? Like I know you can Spotify comment on um, the SoundCloud ones, but I don't really look into it that much. So apologies if anyone's actually putting comments on there. Um, it's literally a case of me just dragging, dropping, uploading, and then leaving. Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe looking at the stats now and again. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't think so. I don't right. think so. Okay. But yeah, anyway, the, the usual social media bits, uh, add the hashtag AskMark, we'll find your question and uh, we'll add it to the story. Um, yeah. Again, obviously it's on Instagram, it's on YouTube, as well as a podcast. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for today. Have you got anything else you want to add, Mark? Yeah, there, there are a few questions. Uh, <laughs> I've just logged on. It's, it's It seems to be one guy and he, he just sort of asks a, a, a lot of things. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll answer them next week. Um, <laughs> If you want to uh, sort of check out our merchandise, uh, we do have plenty of Simply oh, Scuba yeah. merchandise on Springs. Is it officially Springs now or is it Teespring? They call it, it's Teespring. They're never going to be able to have the Springs.com. They're never going to yeah. be able to have that. So it's always going to be Teesprings. Teespring. Uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube, there's going to be a, uh, a banner down below. Uh, if you want any uh, of the latest and greatest Simply Scuba uh, merchandise, then head over to there. Um, if you want to uh, check out some Simply, not Simply Scuba, uh, just scuba diving equipment, of course, head over to simplyscuba.com. We sell all sorts of different brands, so it's worth checking the, uh, mm. the website out. Uh, it's pretty much 100% at the moment. Um, so yeah, you can check out the latest and greatest scuba diving equipment. A few of the bits that I've uh, sort of spoken about today are available on the website from me flex hoses to uh, I think sort of tech shorts and whatnot. They're all available. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, I do yeah, have one like, other thing. Share, subscribe. Yeah. I do have one other thing. On Instagram, <laughs> we've got a competition at the moment. So we've teamed up with the guys mm -hmm. over at Dive Saga. Um, and basically they've written a book of career in scuba. So we've got a copy uh, for you uh, to give away, basically. So if you want to win a scuba diving book, if you're interested in a potential career in diving, like, mm. like, like, the, like the instructor uh, question a few moments ago, you can use that book to maybe wet your whistle and get interested in it. So you can win a copy of that. Just head over to our Instagram um, for all the T's and C's and all that sort of thing on how to enter over there. But yeah, <clears throat> cool. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all. Uh, as Sean mentioned, uh, just ask any old question down in the comments below and we'll get to it next week. Thank you for watching, everybody. And of course, safe diving. Stay classy, scuba divers. Mm -hmm.